Yeah, hello, good morning, everyone. Glad to see you. Um, although it's only the camera I'm looking at in the moment. The first uh, slide, which you see right now, I hope if the technique works, um, might consider might be considered uh, as a thesis, uh, PhD thesis. I'm defending here, uh, but um, I promise you this will be, I hope, an attractive presentation, but not a PhD thesis. But nevertheless, the the whole uh, problems we are running into are so complex and so enormous that I thought it might be uh, a good starting point in writing this very long title to my presentation. So what we are, we are I would like to, to discuss with you is indeed the transformation process today and uh, to give you just a short insight what kind of organization we are you see here on the second page on the right side the people who are representing our board and on the left side all the companies being involved in the network um, and although you can't read the names um, I thought it's uh, nevertheless a good idea to, to show you the picture because my intention is to make clear what we have is a combination between uh, production companies, the OEMs, um, those supplying companies which are supporting the OEMs and research institutes uh, together with a lot of other organizations being interested in the development of their car uh, industry in eastern part of Germany. And the whole idea was always to get in, in uh, to, to use innovation which we are which we have in the region for the development of the region. So everyone is talking about transformation, and I think uh, we have one advantage here in a part of Germany that is that we have quite a lot of experience with transformation, especially if you're a little bit older. Than I am, for example, I'm 57 now. Um, and the people here in Eastern part of Germany made this huge transformation process uh, in the beginning of the 1990s. And uh, here on the, the left side, you see uh, the old tradition of producing cars in Eastern Germany in 1985. Um, and on the right side, you see the new uh, plans, production plans, which we have here. So you see that there is an enormous change which happened, enormous change in the mindset um, also of the people. Um, but also you have this old tradition of manufacturing, producing cars. So usually people here have a, a good understanding what car industry means, what logistic means, and have a clear uh, interest in developing this technology and this industry uh, further. We think uh, that, that we have actually some uh, benefits in the region, which I have summarized here, which might differ eastern part of Germany if you compare it to other regions. Um, the first one is that we actually have several OEMs working at the forefront of electron uh, mobility here. Um, for example, BMW have started with their uh, ID, um, uh, the I3 production, the I8 production here in Leipzig some years ago. We do have now VW in Zwickau, which changed the whole production facility, building about 300 cars a year with uh, um, a burning fossil uh, fuels, uh, motors to electromobility. Uh, we do have, uh, of course, now the new development with Tesla, in Berlin Brandenburg and in so far you see there are a lot of really big production companies being here uh, focusing their interest now on the new e-mobility. We do also have a strong battery supply industry. Um, both of you know that uh, CHTL has uh, started its investment already some years ago, but also now several other companies like Pharasis, Microbus are starting their business uh, with the production of batteries. So there is quite a unique combination between producers, suppliers, and also uh, battery suppliers. As I said already, we do have this strong tradition in the production of cars, and we have this existing network uh, in which car producers, suppliers, research institutes uh, are working together. And I think especially these times of Corona, 
have shown that network is sometimes something which is, is really helpful and uh, provide us with the support which we need to survive in a situation which is as serious as it is right now. Um, to, to give you also a hint about the, the, the amount of cars being produced here, I've uh, shown in this map, uh, in this slide, uh, a map uh, with the different production facilities uh, and the uh, Einheiten, which is the units, the amounts of cars being produced there. And you see in the north, Mercedes Benz and Ludwigsfelder, which is very close to Berlin, producing about 50,000 uh, cars uh, a year. But we do have Porsche, BMW, Opel, uh, and VW. And uh, as you see, for example, in Leipzig, where I'm sitting right now, uh, we have with BMW uh, 230,000 cars being produced here, and Porsche also being in Leipzig with 120,000. Um, and if you see then, as I said, Zwickau, uh, at that time it was only 170. And today we have 300,000 um, scheduled for production. So it's really an enormous amount of cars being produced here in the region. The topics of the future um, are not really new for you. Uh, nevertheless, I think this one slide might be appropriate to, to indicate what are the topics we are working on and actually it's also what we as an organization are working on together with our members, uh, which is digitalization, which is flexible production and logistic uh, and of course, which is in the new development of electromobility. Some years ago, we also started uh, this fourth branch, which is the human, uh, because we realized that focusing only on technology is not sufficient. You also have to focus on the humans, uh, the human beings uh, running the companies, uh, producing the parts, making the innovations, and so far all the questions related to qualification, for example, uh, are handled under this topic. Uh, beside of all these technical challenges which we are facing, uh, there is one thing which I would like to mention, um, which is the, the addition, I call it the additional challenge, which is the requests from politics and the society, which are increasing. Um, this increasing pressure, of course, is on the one side uh, positive, because it brings uh, the pressure which resulted then in new developments and new innovations. But it's also a little bit dangerous because as always, if you press too hard, it's like with hugging, and you know, there's a small difference between hugging, which is very nice and, and uh, pressing uh, too strong uh, so that, that the others don't feel comfortable any longer. So what we have to find, I think, is, is a really good balance between these uh, requests from politics and what the companies can deliver with innovations. Um, we do have this hype of e-mobility. Everyone is talking about e-mobility. Um, nevertheless, I would like to, to indicate with some numbers that this is right now not the majorities of cars being produced. Yes, it will be changed over time, but it doesn't mean that the old car technology is dead. Uh, for example, in August, September, uh, these financial incentives given by the federal government uh, for buying e-cars were really successful. Uh, we had about 14% of all new authorized automotives uh, in Germany were e-cars. Um, so the total amount was about 43,000. This is a really success. Uh, really surprise. Um, and what we have to, to consider, however, is that in total, about 2.9 million passenger cars have been authorized in 2020, and 194,000 of these have been e cars. So the, the ratio is, is quite different. And again, to, to give you a better understanding of these numbers, I would like to highlight that in VW Zwickau, we produce 330,000 e-cars a year alone, not to mention all the other companies. Um, so the final result between e-cars and um, the old-fashioned cars is 93% uh, 
0.3% versus 6.7. So yes, there is a clear move towards this new technology, but don't forget that we also have the other products still on the market. And one of the key challenges actually, whether it's in the eastern part of Germany or the whole Germany or in Europe, is indeed the number of charging stations. Because what we realize when we talk to people is um, they buy only a new car if they can charge it easily. So having uh, the right amount of charging stations, having an attractive price is of an enormous importance for the successful development of e-mobility. Therefore, we are working very hard at the moment to get the right infrastructure uh, in line. And to, to make life even more complex and difficult for those being the, the mobility sector, um, we do have the discussion on, on, on hydrogen as, as an um, alternative fuel also, which means that, of course, that there is a little bit of unsecurity going on. Um, how much do I have to invest in this technology if there is already another one? Um, most of the experts in the moment believe that we will have a share uh, having battery cars uh, in, for the next 10 years in the private sector and having uh, the, the LKW sector uh, with, with hydrogen as the fuel of the future. Then, of course, to make everything even more complex and more difficult, uh, we have this wonderful coronavirus, uh, which had a lot of impact. And I don't want to bother you too much with numbers, just this one slide to give you an indication about the difficulties uh, this virus raised during the last year in this automotive industry, which is of such a strong relevance for the development um, of, of our nation. And uh, during the first month in 2020, only 1 million cars had been produced in Germany, which was 35% less than in the same period a year before. Yes, we had a positive development in December 2020. We had about 311,000 new authorized cars, which was 10% plus if you compare it to December of 2010. But that's a very important but the total amount of authorized passenger cars in Germany, as I've already indicated, is only 2.9 million in 2020, which was about 20% lower than in the year before. And if you look at the production um, of cars in Germany, it was even a decrease of 25%, so the lowest level in 45 years. So in so far, uh, everyone interested in innovation um, also have to consider that the industry was hurt very dramatically by these developments and hurt in industry means usually there is a loss uh, uh, there's less money available for future investments federal government has tried to run an initiative called 35c uh, to support the transformation process in the automotive uh, industry with about 3 billion uh, euro. Uh, we will see how this will run in the next two years and how successful it will be. Beside of this, let's say, pressure and all the topics coming from the outside, there is also something coming from the inside, which is uh, very important, especially for the supply and the logistic industry. Uh, this is the, the request towards the supply industry by the production industry. Uh, I've indicated here a, a nice picture from BMW, which I found on LinkedIn, um, where they uh, made challenge to themselves. They said, we challenge ourselves to reduce the CO2 emission related to the production of each of our cars by 80% until 2030. And this is a challenge they are only be able to meet if they integrate the supply industry into it. That means there is a strong demand by the production industry right now that the supply industry 
is also trying whatever is being possible to reduce the amount of CO2 emissions when producing their little supply part. And this is indeed uh, something uh, the, the industry was not used to in the, in the past. We do have a lot of different initiatives uh, also for the production facilities and the intra-logistic. Um, here, for example, is, is a very uh, famous example from BMW in Leipzig, uh, which has changed uh, their intra-logistic to water, uh, to, to hydrogen, sorry, uh, to uh, in, uh, increase this, uh, decrease the CO2. And uh, this is, uh, was an experiment, of course. Here on the right side, you see the, the hydrogen fueling system. So that means within the production plant, um, you can, you can uh, reload uh, in a minute with hydrogen, uh, which is much, much easier than the former way of um, um, batteries, which were used before. So this is, is quite a new development and uh, BM W in Leipzig has uh, made a very good experience with this. Um, another challenge also coming from the, the car industry is the, uh, the, the Catena, uh, Catena X automotive network, which is a very new, brand new network just recently being established. The whole idea is um, if we want to meet all these goals, if you would like to have a transparency towards the CO2 emissions, we need sharing of data. There is no alternative that within the whole um, production way, uh, we have to have a stronger exchange of data through the, the entire automotive value chain. And this Catena X network has been established by production facility, uh, sorry, by OEMs and by supply industry to actually exactly reach this point. And uh, I was on the, on the first side very impressed because it was a clear indication only together we can work, we have to work to meet our goals. There is, however, also a second challenge, and the second challenge is. If you're not part of the game, you're out. And so far, this this question uh, here of uh, how can we exchange that data between the different uh, elements in the value chain will have a stronger relevance in the future than it does have today. And so far, I hope I could uh, have been able to give you a short overview about all these challenges in the automotive and the logistic industry we are facing. Um, hope that I was able to give you a short indication that at least in the moment in, G in, in eastern part of Germany, especially, uh, we have a strong industry, strong experience, and the, the capacity and the ability to meet these challenges. But of course, new innovations are necessary and so far there is a growing interest and a growing openness for cooperation with others and especially with startup companies. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Katzek. This was an uh, impressive presentation and uh, thank you so much for, for collecting all these numbers and giving such a um, such a colorful picture because you hear in the media a lot of the transformation process in automotive, but you now you really get uh, a feeling what's all behind there and why is this really um, putting pressure on the um, German economy. So um, maybe let me just come to the first question because we have only a few uh, minutes left for a short Q&A session. Um, Although I was in time, I think. <laughs> don't mind, don't mind. <laughs> um, the... Um, if you're looking at, as a young high-tech enterprise and you, you want to become a supplier for, mode, for the automotive industry, they have a real kind of uh, strict um, restrictions um, when it comes to lean production and so on and so forth. Is there any, any advice you could give how, how they could, um, how a, s a smooth cooperation uh, could start? Um, well, actually, there, it depends very, very much on the time which you have. Um, my advice for startup companies would be twofold. 
first one, look for strong suppliers of production companies uh, because they are already integrated in them. They are customers, they know the habits um, to integrate new innovations in the company by cooperation with supply industry is much easier than being a small, a small startup going to the, to the OEM and say, hey, uh, I'm Carl, Anna, whatever, uh, and, and I have a really wonderful innovation. The second one is, um, and we made very good experience within our own network with this, um, is to become part of this network and use the possibilities with this network to again and again present your new ideas. And we had several small companies actually, uh, I just remember Ligenium, for example, in, in Chemnitz, they had a very interesting um, a new development for the uh, intra-logistic, a new transport um, um, behälter, I'm forgetting the word, I'm sorry. Boxes, um, yeah. Although they are such a small company, they have already several contracts with OEMs. Okay, so we have just a question of, of Sylvia in the in the chat um, because she didn't see any startup or young young and high tech enterprise within the ACOD network. So, what are the the options to participate within your network? Uh, well, that's probably the reason because all the the logos were so small that they couldn't find it. Um, we have <laughs> actually, I'm, um, I'm I'm trying very strong to integrate uh, or to support. Um, uh, startup companies. For example, we have a um, uh, we have an innovation prize, in, and all the companies participating, even if they don't get the prize, get the support of finding uh, their own customers within our network. So that means really very direct support, and this is what I'm focusing. And, uh, and what we have in the moment is, I would say, like five, six smaller uh, innovative uh, companies which we are supporting. And I think that's uh, for a network our size quite a, quite a lot because it's really an individual support which we are trying to run, uh, which is how do you get your customers? And this needs of course a little bit of time, and therefore we're focusing on this number. But as I said, we are open, um, and we have innovate uh, so-called innovation pitch developed, where the OEM is defining the topic. And everyone is, is is being able to provide their innovation, and uh, we have, we have seen big companies participating, but we have seen also startups participating. And actually, very often these little startups have answers where I was totally surprised, and also the OEM was very surprised because they are working some 50 years with a specific technique, and suddenly someone is coming and has has total change of this um, and uh, that, that's a question of, of the mindset um, and we need and so far also the innovation of, of smaller companies therefore we make this individual support therefore we have this innovation price and therefore we do have the innovation pitches with the OEMs these are three tools uh, where every startup can participate in our network. So, sounds great. Thank you. It, just, it also sounds like a, a good stopping point. However, I still have a question. <laughs> so coming back to this uh, Corona situation, um, you hear a lot that uh, the supply chains are kind of disrupted. Um, what do you see how the um, automotive industry, how automotive suppliers react on this uh, disruption within the supply chains? Uh, actually, um, I'm a little bit surprised about what's happening now. In the beginning, I thought that the supply industry um, will, let's say, localize more. That we have, uh, that we get more products from the region instead of from from far distance, because then we have the transport. Um, however, the let's say the amount of pieces you bring together for building a car is so enormous. Um, and need such a high qualification for every single individual, for, sorry, for any individual piece that it is not possible to produce everything in the region. And so far, uh, we, 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 we are an international industry and this means also we will continue to be an international company in the import and use of parts as we do for the export of the cars. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. So maybe uh, I, I don't see any questions in the chat. So if you have something burning under your nails, please, to all participants, feel free. Don't be don't be shy uh, to to um, to post your, your question here in the chat. Um, oh, there is one. In terms of innovation activities, uh, are you working together with other initiatives like uh, hubs or networks? And how could that cooperation look like? Uh, that's actually a very good question because uh, these networks had in the past the tradition on focusing very much on which is our what is our region what is our technology and i think this is out therefore we were focusing not on for example saxony or saxony anhalt but on eastern part of, of germany that we said well we do have a limit but we have a larger limit and second we are working very close together with a lot of different uh, initiatives um, which are automotive relevant, as for example, the cluster Logistik uh, Mitteldeutschland or the cluster IT Mitteldeutschland with uh, HIPOS, which is a hydrogen uh, network. Um, so that we are looking very specifically for other organizations, not to, to double the work, but really to look for corporations and to find synergies between the two. Uh, and, and for example, with logistics and IT, it's very obvious. You can't talk about digitalization, industry 4.0, um, and then KI, um, sorry, AI uh, in, in the future, but not looking for IT industry which have exactly this knowledge and this expertise. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, so this is also maybe link, a good link to, to another question. I, I realized that you have this, um, this innovation topics, um, this future topics, uh, this four of them. And um, the, the, the one surprising one was the human. So you put the human into center uh, for future innovation. Could you say something more about that? Well, um, if, if you remember one of the last sentences of the speaker before uh, I gave my presentation, he said, don't combine the big tanker with, with a startup company because of different cultures. So you, even with this, you see, we do have different cultures. Um, and the, the culture is something which is made by human beings. And so far, the, the, the human factor is for the development of company extremely important. Um, you, have to, um, you have to develop your company together with your employees, and you also have to give them the chance to, to participate in the future by uh, additional education. Because if we get new technologies, the employees need a better education. Um, and this is something where we have to focus our attention uh, even more. And, and therefore, we said the human is something we have to focus our attention to, as we do to other technologies. Yeah, yeah, I see. Thank you. Thank you for turning, uh, pointing that out. Thank you.